Lee Fraser, I'm a composer working in the field of electroacoustic music. I mean, broadly speaking, I studied composition with a guy called Frank Denyer at um, Dartington College of Arts in, um, in Devon in the UK. I treat sound objects as I would instruments, you know, they have, they are defined in a sort of page of code and they have a sort of sonic identity that is contained, then it would be a case of like finding um, a group of sound objects that complement each other and, and, and then that's where the, the process of composing begins. So it's about exploring the, the parameters within these like sound objects, you know, in, in sort of concert with each object. So, yeah. It's a kind of feedbacking process, you know, I'll develop a sound, I'll improvise with that sound with others, like alongside other sounds. That might sort of urge me to make some changes to the sound so that it has more sort of um, resonance with the other sounds that I'm using. So it's, yeah, it's a sort of, as I said, it's like a feedback process, so constantly developing these sounds and even, even like the origin of those, what would later become for me a certain palette of like relatively fixed sonic identities have all come from things way back where I was initially using electroacoustic treatments of like recorded sound and you know so there is some trace of uh, some tombral profile perhaps of a of a, a, a recorded sound or something like that that's been abstracted and It's a sound object. It's a sound object. <laughs> I find that I'm drawn towards quite ugly sounds, you know, or, or sounds that might be considered grotesque in some way, um, uh, or physically repulsive sounds. Um, but they are always sweetened, I think, in synthesis, and I have this like way of, or this sort of um, uh, habit of softening the edges of like sounds that might be considered to be like repulsive or you know I have to resist the urge to do that always because sometimes the, 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 the roar of sound carries uh, power. As both listeners and composers will naturally want to recreate the behaviour of real world sounds even if that's unconscious in in in, in our work um it's sometimes difficult to overcome that urge to try to apply yeah try to apply that so each sound has its own spatial logic or its own kind of um laws of physics or something like that so it behaves in unpredictable ways spatially timbrally or so i don't i don't use recorded sound but i use spectral processes to derive you know pitch relations and things like that when I was studying when I was doing my PhD I, I wrote this piece Playa and that I was interested in the sound of the harpsichord but not recorded sound of the harpsichord so I was using physical models there to sort of recreate and extend the sounds of the harpsichord as I sort of saw it as I experienced it so I had a, like a sort of phenomenological um, analysis of the sound of a, of a harpsichord or a struck note on a harpsichord and I was extending all these qualities that I thought um, um, were the most sort of attractive timbrally speaking of that sound <laughs> um, so it, that that was a that was a sort of contained compositional um, language there okay <laughs> I 
I use a variety of different uh, granular synthesis processes in, in C sound, but by far the most sort of generous is this particle opco, which encompasses most, if not all types of time domain granular synthesis that Curtis Rhodes talks about in, um, in his book Microsound. I'm particularly fond of the trainlet function in, in this opcode. Trainlets are basically band-limited impulse trains, which you can color according to a bass frequency, number of partials, and the general distribution of amplitude amongst those partials. It facilitates my 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 sort of way of thinking. I think even the syntax of C sound, how I how you sort of structure a process, is really sympathetic to the way I think. It just gives me a lot of freedom to to produce these sounds that I'm interested in. Yeah, no, it takes a long time for me to to compose music. Yeah, usually, I'm I'm producing one piece a year. I know when something's done. I know that it, nothing more should be added. Uh, nothing, you know that? nothing removed. I, I, I that's why I haven't finished these pieces. That it's not yet right for me. It doesn't feel right for me yet. But no, it's, it's, so one, I, it's one, one complete one? process the whole whole time. Yeah, it's it's. I couldn't work any other way. That's why it's a problem sometimes for me when I find something that I'm unhappy with. You know, if I'm looking back halfway into a composition I'm noticing a problem earlier on and I sort of pull that out and before I know it everything's unraveled and I have to start again or something yeah, this okay. is why it takes so long for me so it's, uh, okay. it's not the, it's not the most economical way of working but um, uh, I, I just I'm intuitively uh, driven to to, to to compose in that way yeah It's, there's this ongoing tension in my work between uh, the referential and the non-referential. And my ideal would be to create sounds that are non-referential, but it's it's impossible to do that. You know, we're, we all bring our own um, experiences to the reception of the sound, so we project um, images onto any kind of material. You know, even if it's sort of flat sine tone horizontal, you know, dead sound, it's um, you still managed to sort of find a, a reference there somehow. So ideally I would like to produce sounds that uh, are at the very limit of, of, of uh, our sort of lived experience, you know. It's what I'm always seeking in other people's music as well, stuff that, you know, it, it just, I can't explain, I, I can't process properly, it's, you know, it's but I, I can only get there, get to that sort of liminal space through using what I know of my experiences of sound in the world. Do you know what I mean? It's not like, I, how can I picture the outside from within? <laughs> it's not, it's, it's, it's sort of impossible, but it's the, it's the ambition to do that which drives me. I couldn't say how I was influenced by philosophy or you know sci-fi even you know but I I it, it's it's definitely in there it's that that sort of that sort of speculation that I'm always driven by that. there's a, a period in um, English sort of Christianity with uh, these sort of mystic, medieval mystics that were thinking about ways of approaching God, like the discussion of, of God. 
I, I'm interested in the outside, which in medieval terms would have, you know, been the, a sort of analogy of that would, would have been God, basically. So the English mystics were trying to understand God by describing everything that he isn't. They were influenced in this by Richard of St. Victor, who was part of a long tradition of negative theology. In his commentary on the book of Ezekiel, Richard focuses on the first and last visions and he includes these illustrations of the, the last vision in particular, of the, the, the temple on the mountain. The interesting thing about Richard's sort of rendering of those, those visions is their precision, their architectonic precision. So he's bringing this extreme kind of rationality to the discussion of God. So, so you end up with this constructive and rationalized framing of uh, a visitation from the outside. And for me, there's an interesting line running from Richard of St. Victor and through the Kabbalah and right up to contemporary philosophy, all of which seek to sort of engage with the outside. The Kabbalah, again, is trying to sort of channel God or the outside through number. They were adding numerical values to letters in sacred texts in order to decode what they regarded as being symbolic images or events. And again, the visions of Ezekiel are of particular interest here. They were reading those images in, through this, this sort of numerical procedure. But the, the sort of distinction with the Kabbalistic engagement with the outside is, is, is that it's much more experimental and inductive. So this experimental approach to the outside is taken to more extreme level through, more recently through Nick Land and his, his development of the pneumogram, which is basically a, a radicalized Kabbalistic procedure. Through this, he's trying to break down and expose the, the absolute contingency of certain features of what he calls the human security system. Logic is, a, is, a, is, a, is an example of something that he, he's seeking to sort of attack. And there's a suggestion in this that in doing so, uh, one can establish a kind of connection with the outside. In, in a sort of similar way, in my work, I'm also interested in confronting that sense of interiority. In Nick Land's terms, that's the human security system. In, in what I'm doing, I'm, I'm sort of exploring the human auditory system, trying to point out flaws in, in it um, in order to, to, to sort of access or broach trade with the outside, or at least to fire the imagination into conceiving of an outside. So in all this, you've got a, a sort of harnessing of rationality going on, but only in order to go beyond that and in an attempt to establish some kind of contact with the outside. But, but I would say the first composer that I became affected by in a sort of cerebral way would have been Bach and Zanakis, really. I like the eccentricity and spiritual radiance of Messiaen and Gerard Grisey's music also shares Messiaen's sensitivity to colour. I think it's equally majestic and, and, and singular in its choices. Lackerman is another composer I always return to. And from the electroacoustic world, Horatio Vagioni has a, a very distinct style, this sort of rich textural quality, which obviously is the result of his almost career-long obsession with sound at the sort of atomic level. I mostly listen to instrumental music, I have to, I have to say. And even with like electronic music, there, there's not an awful lot out there that I'm attracted to, unfortunately. I'm, I'm always looking for something um, to, to inspire me, but um, it's quite rare to find things that really resonate with what I'm looking for.